here? Is it here? ABBA letter. What is the ABBA letter? So a letter has been going around Philadelphia. It has been found in neighborhoods such as the Fairmount neighborhood, Brewery Town, and now there are reports of it going around in South Philadelphia in Kensington with this weird cryptic message written on it. So today I want to talk about this ABBA letter and talk about some of my theories behind it and draw some similarities that seem somehow typical of Philadelphia in general. So, the letter. ABBA. This is to inform you that all of the food ate since first grade is alive in your body, especially the dead animal remains or meat since it was cooked alive and isn't alive in your body. Anywhere it goes, you must go with it. That's a 365 day a year from first grade to now. Breakfast, lunch, dinner. Also, newborn baby received your first grade body or a meal just like the 365 days a year. Breakfast, space, lunch, dinner. The only way I see to save yourself from every which of way of being burned alive that's a that's scheduled is to become a solid steel statue by place yourself under anesthesia. And mixing your body with melted metal, then re-solidifying the metal, or seal yourself in cement. When it becomes real to you, you can type it up and have a lot of copies made, then pass them out and post them up. What is needed is a steel furnace where the metal can be melted and the bodies of people and animals mixed with the metal to become steel unable to be hurt. Of course you'll be sedated first. There will Letter B, a meeting on April 27, 2019, 12 o'clock in the afternoon on the subject of building a steel furnace at 27th and Girard Ave on the vacant lot. We need a bulldozer, what we need is a bulldozer to dig some ditches and steel furnace equipment. Do attend. So if we read through the letter, you might get the feeling that these are the words of someone in mental distress, which is the conclusion a lot of Reddit users came to even so much as crowdsourcing a fund that would go to the writer or mental disabilities. However, the creator of this letter is still a mystery, and although I am not an expert on mental disorders by any means, once reading this letter, I drew immediate ties to the Toy and Bee Tyler. They are mysterious markers with bizarre messages. Artists or pranksters have been sticking these plaques on roadways in other places around the globe for years now. Toy and Bee idea in Kubrick's 2001. Resurrect dead on planet Jupiter. I have no idea what it means. Maybe it's a message from space. If it's anybody's guess what the meaning really is or who's behind it. So if you're not aware of Toy and Bee tiles, Toy and Bee tiles started showing up around the 80s with a similar kind of cryptic message inscribed on them. These messages started showing up in the asphalt of major cities like DC, Boston, Philadelphia, all the way down to Chile. And if you've never seen one of these messages or you've seen it in passing, you probably couldn't understand the inscription, which is Toy and Bee idea in movie 2001, resurrect the dead on planet Jupiter. That's all they say. These tiles were a mystery for years, with estimated dates starting with them showing up around 1987. I could go on forever about two and B tiles, so I'll stop myself here, but if you ever come across a toy and B tile just in passing, do yourself a favor and photograph it because we will see the end of Toy and Bee tiles in our lifetime, so they are really a spectacle to behold. But if you have an opportunity to take in their madness, please send me the picture. <laughs> Anyway, Toy and Bee tiles, from what I understand, were made in order to convey a message. So the Toy and Bee Tyler had this message that he wanted to send out to the public about 
resurrecting the dead and that science was the only way to create heaven and we had to do all of this by drawing ideas from the movie 2001 a space odyssey where scientists say there is a heaven but we have to create it with science so the toy and b tyler felt really connected to this message but had no way to convey this message because he was denied a place on tv he was denied a place in newspaper articles and even when he called in or wrote to these places they just thought that he was crazy so he started making these tiles and putting them everywhere to let the public know of his message he even went so far as to create a pirate radio station that would interrupt feeds so he could drive around, convey his message to people, let people know we could live forever if we just resurrected the dead on Jupiter. So the Toy and B Tyler, which I failed to mention, is from Philadelphia, would plaster his message all over the city with no other means to get it out there. But other than his main message, the Toyland B. Tyler would also include little side messages on his tiles that I feel like hold a very similar tone to the do attend of the Abba letter. With different things like I'm begging you, thank you, and goodbye. And he also released an entire, I believe, four part giant tile of his manifesto. I wish I could have seen this giant thing in person and walked all over it but the language there feels very similar. Could the ABBA letter be by the Toy and B Tyler? Obviously I have no idea, but I did immediately draw these similarities in language and ability to spread a message. The Toy and B Tyler couldn't just go online and type out his messages, which could have been easier, but also nonetheless just as easy to be drowned out. Though the Toy and B. Tyler was kind of just stuck to promoting his message in Philadelphia. I've seen interviews with some of his neighbors that were like, Yeah, my dad was gonna kick his ass if he put that over the radio one more time. So, in my opinion, I don't think they are the same people, but I was super excited and at least thrilled to think about Toy and B. Tiles. There is an amazing documentary about the Toy and B. Tile experience called Resurrect the Dead. It is for free online. I even reached out to one of the documentary makers who is in Philadelphia to ask his opinion of the Abba, of the Abba letter. And although he didn't get back to me, I see that the Abba letter has at least made its way into his atmosphere. Having a much deeper message was not something I could find in the 45 minutes of research I yielded for this topic. But I did notice that the band ABBA had posted on a message board that they were having their reunion last April 27th, 2018. So sit with that. But that was really the only connection I could find online researching these different topics and keywords. I couldn't find any sort of grouping of words or letters to indicate any of these things had a deeper meaning. So one aspect of this letter is that all the meat you've ever eaten since the first grade is inside and alive in your body. So I couldn't find any connection to that in popular culture, in Google searches, but looking it up, meat does take the longest to digest in your system as opposed to, I guess, other vegetables and things you may eat taking up to 72 hours, but not 20 years or 365 days for an infant. I couldn't find anything that would put these words together or make sense other than meat is the longest thing to digest in the body and well, do a 10. So my next idea was that this is a stunt. I've seen a few memes about this lot being turned into cheap luxury housing. So we went over to 27th and Girard to check this out. So this is the lot at 27th and Girard. It is now a place where like people just let their dogs go but it used to be a supermarket you can kind of see like further down here 
where there used to be the cage where they would keep the shopping carts on the property so people wouldn't steal them. Uh, but they tore it down and now it's just like this lot and you can see a bunch of people are just walking their dogs. There's no furnace. Freestyle dog park. It's a, yeah. People do like donuts here. It's kind of random that it's this lot. People were parking in it and then they put up a fence. That's it. That's all it is. Here's like the pieces that would have been the like cage, which is kind of a like normal Philadelphia grocery store experience. The smaller ones. So Brewery Town is a neighborhood that has been projected to be the next big thing for the last 30 years. And with the big housing boom that is happening in Philadelphia right now, it's kind of finally getting there. For the longest time, it was considered a food desert with a bottom dollar just being built there like seven years ago. And it was potentially going to be a bigger transportation hub with plans to have it have its own light rail system and things of that nature, but those plans were thrown out and construction of those things was never even attempted. So with all that, I would say if somebody wanted to bring more attention to Brewery Town, this is probably a good place to start. I talked to a lot of people out there who don't even know where Brewery Town is. If you could associate Brewery Town with 27th and Girard forever, then it would probably be in your best favor if you were a developer in that area or even a local bar. I saw a theory that a local bar was teasing on their Instagram a couple different ads that had the similar language to the letter. So I don't know if the bar was just using it as a meme because the memes have exploded online to the point where it was a lot easier for me to conduct research a few days ago. Now everything is so shrouded in meme culture that I don't even know what I'm reading anymore. What is right? Do attend. Breakfast. Lunch and dinner. So I wouldn't put it past anyone at this point to try to create a stir like this, but I regret to inform you that Simpsons did it. Uh oh, Simpsons did it! Think back with me now to the episode of The Simpsons where they discover a fossilized angel and Homer brings it back to the house and he has all these people come to the garage to see it and the entire time Lisa is like, I don't think that's a fossilized angel. Like, I don't think this is right. Can we take a little test of it? Like, this isn't right, this isn't right. And then at the end of the episode, they find out that this was a publicity stunt to advertise a local mall called like Heaven Sent or something like that. And then the angel goes on top of the mall and then everybody just reluctantly shops there, like nothing happened. So I would say we all understand the strength of publicity stunts at this point. And isn't it helpful for all of us if we're all being completely numb to our sense of skepticism at this point? So some Nest Cam footage of somebody handing out flyers has been released on Reddit. The person who posted it though has oddly said that it didn't come from their Nest Cam, but someone that they know. But you can see from this footage that this is a person who might be like a construction worker. They have paint or plaster on their pants and on their jacket and they seem to have like maybe a Carhartt hat on, maybe some sort of construction level thing. That was just my first impression. But if you listen to the audio from this nest, you can hear the guy like very heavily breathing. I don't want to make any health assumptions on this video, but I do want to say that it is very easy to hire someone to pass out flyers for you. So this could be footage of the ABBA letterer, or this could just be like a paid day worker and he is handing out these letters in the freezing cold. But if it is the ABBA letterer, that is dedication because it rains every day. So in this letter, there is a little bit of language that's almost like, <laughs> like and share. 
When it becomes real to you, you can type it up and have a lot of copies made and then pass them out and post them up. So since this, he has either recruited a, a big following because I've seen a lot of photocopies and Xerox of this letter, or people are just like, I'm all the way invested, I'm completely in, I'm gonna comment on posts from the governor, see you April 27th, and make all research for this completely muddied up. What am I doing? Why didn't I get one? But overall, isn't this fun? Because originally a couple days ago when the letter started to surface, it was only found in the Fairmount and Brewery Town neighborhoods. And like I said, it has spread all the way to South Philly. So if it is that man or that tired courier or people just spreading the message because they also agree that something doesn't feel right in their tummy, hmm, feels like something from, hmm, I don't know, 18 years ago, let's all become steel and figure it out. So I spoke to a couple of you guys who actually had ABBA letters show up at their house. So my theory that this was just something exclusively happening on Reddit and that nothing was actually really going on was kind of blown out of the water. But for the most part, you guys said that either your boyfriend or your roommate immediately threw out the letter. Someone I spoke to said that the letter was taped to their door and then someone else said that it was inside of their mailbox. So I think that this thing is growing and manifesting. This man has scotch tape. I don't know what's going on, but I do enjoy the consensus that most people saw it and threw it out. You know, I don't see any of these things going up on eBay, but as a hoarder who needs a ton of help, I would still be grasping onto that letter. <laughs> but good for you guys. If this all turns out to be something, that's a piece of history right there. Although in the letter, he does encourage you to type it up yourself and print it out and post it. So by all means, all of us can participate in a little bit of history. And you know, it's kind of funny that it hasn't shown up in another city at this point. You know what I mean? But I have a subscriber from Australia that was like, oh yeah, I'm in on that joke, mate. So it really is global. And what an interesting spotlight to put on Philadelphia. So finally, I just want to say there has been a lot of steam about attending the event on April 27th, which is conveniently on a Saturday. So, you know, leave the kids with grandma. We're going to walk our dog over there and see what is up with the furnace. This letter has blown up so far beyond Philadelphia that I really don't think there is any way of stopping the people from coming to the field. I mean, we're a generation that celebrates October 3rd because they mentioned it in Mean Girls. So I really don't think that there will be a missed opportunity for the tri-state to drive to brewery town, try and find parking and end up at the 27th Gerard Field. But what is the best case scenario? The guy is there and he's talking about all that stuff and he becomes instantly popular and this becomes a cult and we all become a part of it, agree with him? Or is it some weird thing that'll backfire and we'll all end up in the field and Kelsey Carter will take off her mask and she'll have another face tattoo and we'll all be like, oh, she got us again, I am I better follow, she earned it. But I did get uh, about 50-50 amount of messages from you guys insisting that I do not go and that I should not attend. And I guess I just want to know where that fear comes from or that hesitation. If it is a place of like, this is a publicity stunt, I'm so tired of it, don't even bother to go. Or don't go because it could potentially be dangerous. I reluctantly say I don't want to go. There are, there are some swanky apartments across the street who, you know, Maybe I could befriend the people there and we could crack a cold one at noon and watch the furnace party go down. I'm nervous. If it turns out that it is just a publicity stunt for a new mall opening up, I want to be the first person to get a head start on the part two of this video. Now for an ad read. So if you find yourself in the forefront of a developing meme craze and you're looking for tips on how to build a website, gather research, or understand the basics of starting a podcast, then I would love to introduce to you today's sponsor, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with over 5 million teachers sharing their experience that can be accessed at any time by you. And something I really like about the Skillshare lessons is that they are broken up into segments. 
So you can click on a video about video editing and you might just need to be brushed up a little bit on it, but you understand you just need someone to like give you a little bit of a head start. I think that Skillshare is so good for that because you can just go to the sidebar and everything is broken up into lessons. So you can just click on what you need. You don't have to scrub through a video just to find the little part that you need. It's listed, it's right there, it's convenient. So one thing I really enjoyed on Skillshare was this video on documentary filmmaking. I thought it was really interesting and helpful for me while gathering just like little bits for this video. I also looked up a video on gathering research Research, and I thought it was really helpful for someone like me who doesn't have formal training but loves to have just like a little refresher or learn from experts. So if you were interested in trying out Skillshare, you can check them out on your own for a free trial or if you would like, you can check out the link I have listed down below for a two month free extended trial. Click on that to get your two months free and it will let my sponsors know that you like this video and you enjoyed their service. So thank you guys so much. I know today's video was a little bit out of the ordinary, but this ABBA letter is something I have been obsessing over and Philadelphia has gone absolutely nuts for it. So I'd love to put the feelers out there. If you guys have any more information on it or if you are just interested at all, let me know. Will you be there April 27th? Give this video a like and please make sure to subscribe if you are new here. Share this video because I feel like I haven't seen any other videos on this so far. So I would love to get the word out and I love you guys so much. Until next time, bye.